It's time to take your business to the next level, the boss level. These are the premier business owner strategies and successes being utilized by the industry's top talent today. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. Now let's welcome your host, Ann Ganguza. Hey everyone, welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, and today I'm excited to bring very special guest, Tracy Lindley to the podcast. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Ann. How's it going? It's going great. So a little bit about Tracy. Tracy's been a full-time voice actor since 2014. We are kind of twinsies on that one. And regularly voices projects for clients like Hewitt Packard, Realtor.com, iHeartRadio, Health.com, and many others. She is a well-known expert in the field of LinkedIn and finding clients and is also a mom to four kids ages 7 to 13 who also do voiceover. And she lives in the Midwest area where it's very cold right now. (laughs) Yes, I'm bundled up in a sweater. Well, Tracy, I am so excited to finally have you here on the show. I feel like we're like ships that pass in the night because I've been following you for such a long time and I've seen you at conferences, but we've just kind of (laughs) like passed each other by. (laughs) I bet I've been following you for longer because I remember when I was first starting out, you had a great interview on VO Buzz Weekly that I watched. Oh, I remember when that. I, yep. Yes, it was mm-hmm. a wonderful two-part interview and I learned so much. And I was like, man, she is just dropping truth bombs on here. <laughs> well, thank you. That I'm very honored about that. My goodness. But you, I mean, my gosh, you are just blazing this path to the stars with your career. And really in the last couple of years, you are absolutely the known person outside of being great in voiceover and talented, but also all about marketing and LinkedIn. And so I'm excited to talk to you about that today because I was much more involved in LinkedIn a few years back. And then my business kind of, I have separate paths. Now I'm not as able to keep up as much as I'd like on LinkedIn. So I'm getting ready to learn a whole lot. And bosses, I think you're going to learn a whole lot from this wonderful, wonderful talent here. So let's get going. Before we talk about LinkedIn, tell us a little bit about your journey into voiceover. Well, it started out with me just hanging out, washing dishes in my kitchen, listening to VO Buzz Weekly and other great podcasts like Mm -hmm. VO Boss, which is on the resource page that I have on my website to recommend to other talent that are learning. Thank you. Because you are always giving us value, and You have since the very beginning, and I've learned so much from you. You are a whiz at marketing yourself and a great person just relationally. You know how to connect the dots and how to communicate very well. Well, thank you for that. Oh, well, you're welcome. <laughs> I mean, part of the fun of being on podcasts is getting to tell people how much I enjoy them personally because I'm very mm-hmm. relational myself. <laughs> And I think that if someone was just starting out in the industry, I feel like the best way to get started is to research. And that's what I tell Mm -hmm. everybody. Research, research, research. Read the articles, listen to the podcasts, watch the vlogs, Mm -hmm. do all of those things. And there are some great paid courses too. I recommend all of that stuff because you can't just learn in bits and pieces so much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to kind of put it all together. And we all connect those dots as we're going along in our journey. But I can't remember now what your original question is. (laughs) My my journey. Your journey. Yes, your (laughs) journey. Because you've been doing this a long time. I think we started around the same time, actually. And I was working part-time for a little bit before I went into it full-time. Were you always in it full-time or did you? No. Okay, so you started part-time? I was a claims adjuster for an auto insurance company. And I know you were, from your story, you mm-hmm. were working on installing telephone systems, yep. right? absolutely. And that's how you got your start was, hey, they needed a voice to be on the systems. Mm-hmm. And for me, I have a communication degree. And when I was in college, I had an internship at a cable company. And one day the producer just handed me a piece of paper and was like, hey, you have a nice voice. Will you read this? And I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> so I read it. I get in there. It's no more than a small closet with foam in it and a microphone, right? Mm-hmm. So it's nothing fancy. So I go in there and I read it. And I just found that I have this natural sense of timing. I mm-hmm. knew what 30 seconds should be. Mm -hmm. And that goes back even further to me just reading out loud to kids at the library when I was like 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. I just volunteered my time and I was always like the babysitter that everybody wanted to come and hang out with their kids. So I have read to kids out loud Mm. several years of my life and still love reading out loud to my own kids. Reading out loud is such a skill that we don't realize we need to develop. Yeah. Because when we're reading a book, you know, we're not going to typically read out loud to ourselves. So 
sometimes it feels weird and it feels strange, but that's one of the best skills that we can learn when we're getting into the industry. That's like cold reading skills right there. And I remember myself as a youngster, I would always be that person that would raise the hand. Who wants to read out loud for the class? Yes. Me. And I wrote books too when I was really young. When I was in kindergarten, I learned to write and I started to write books and I read them to the first graders. And it was all about Nibbles the Bunny. But I think that maybe that was so long ago that was like my start. (laughs) We have got to publish these books. The world needs to see Nibbles the Bunny. I'm Have you, you considered that? I, I wish, I wish that I had a picture of it or a record of what it was that I wrote, but I vividly remember drawing the bunny. I illustrated too. And then I wrote the books and I was so proud to read them. And all of my career, and I know yours too, I think a lot of voice actors, when they get into it, they're good cold readers or they've always been like excited to read or perform in front of an audience. And it's wonderful for your cold reading skills. And then I think what happens is as we really get into the act acting a voiceover, then it becomes something where you don't want to use that as a crutch. You want to use it to get yourself to quickly get into the story, but then you need to act. And then if you're reading too much, and then it's going to sound like you're reading too much. But I digress. But I think it's a wonderful skill that everybody needs in order to just, you know, be quick on their feet. Once you get those script changes that come in, like at the last minute, you've got to be able to do a quick, cold read and understand and comprehend that story so that you can then tell it back while you're voicing it. Yeah. And it's yeah. really important to have that that child doesn't mm-hmm. have those inhibitions that we do as adults. Right. So I feel True. like if we could just tap into our inner child, mm-hmm. we wouldn't be scared of it, you know, yeah. because we can all get performance anxiety, especially the more and more and more people come into the room to listen to us perform. Right. It just becomes so scary. Yeah. So it yeah. really all comes down to just reading out loud, having fun with it, telling a story. That's Mm -hmm. what we're here for. Absolutely. Now, this is a little earlier than I was going to get into it, but you're a mom of four kids. So big family. I'm also one of four in the family. Actually, through the pandemic, I became one of six. And that's just a whole nother podcast where I found I had a brother and a sister, which is a wonderful thing. But I loved being a family where we're close in age. Tell me about your family because they're also doing voiceover. And I love how you just talked about how we need to be kids. We need to feel uninhibited. And so do you work with your kids and then also learn from them as well or be reminded of that as well? Oh, gosh, I'm always learning lessons from them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those lessons involve being patient and being Mm -hmm. a good communicator, breaking down what I need from you and saying it nicely. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And hey, that works in marketing too, right? (laughs) Yeah, that's true. I mean, direct communication, but doing it kindly is, I think, a big key to marketing effectively. Yeah. But my kids are always teaching me stuff. Like last night, my daughter, she's nine. She's the middle daughter because I have a son and then three girls. So the middle daughter is right in that sweet spot. You see a lot of auditions that come through, eight to 10, eight to 10. Mm -hmm. So she's right there. She's also recently started taking vocal lessons. They Mm -hmm. do coach as well. Martha Kahn is an excellent teacher for kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love her. My kids love her. But my daughters, all four of the kids actually take piano lessons. So, <gasps> oh, yes, it's great. We it's need so that musicality. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. And I use that musicality when I coach as well because there's a melody to conversation. There's a melody in which most people are trying to achieve that mm-hmm. natural, conversational, authentic. And there's a melody to it, believe it or not, if you break yes. it down. So, were you a vocalist as well, or are you still? Yeah, I mean, I don't sing professionally, but you know, I sing in the shower. Sure. But for the longest time, I was in choir for all four years of high school and went to the all states and the all counties. And absolutely, I still love, love to sing. Mm-hmm. And it is something that in playing piano, understanding where your notes are and being able to read music, it greatly helped breaking down the performance of a conversation. And so, yeah, it's the basis of how I teach a lot, actually, because there's a lot of people who are musical that come into this industry. So, yeah, and they really have Mm -hmm. an advantage. I took lessons, uh, piano lessons for seven years as well. Mm -hmm. And I definitely see a lot of legato, staccato. Yes. Those are pretty big themes in what we do. And also, understanding how to translate what the client is saying, I actually see sort of Mm -hmm. musically in my head. Oh, yeah. 
There's a rhythm. There's definitely a rhythm to it and a beat and also the emotional part of it too, right? The emotion that gets put into it and the passion that gets put into it. Words are notes. And really, it's phrasing is very similar, right? We don't breathe in the middle of our phrases when we talk. It's not like, I'm going to talk to you like this. You know, it's, yeah. there's just a whole composition to it. And, and I believe in my demo production too. It's a storyline from beginning to end. So it's amazing how much music plays into at least how I identify and can work within voiceover and also coach it. Yes. Imagination too. We've got to, again, tap into that inner child where we're able to let ourselves go into the story and become the character. My daughter Mm -hmm. and I both have, my older daughter, my 11-year-old, she loves like fairy tales, princess Mm -hmm. stories, anything that involves, you know, that kind of fantasy world. And right now, I cannot get her nose out of this book that she's reading. Mm -hmm. It's the Ella Enchanted author. Mm -hmm. I can't remember her last name is Levine. Anyway, caught her reading by the light of the nightlight last night when Mm -hmm. she's supposed to be sleeping. But that kind of joy for the story is what we need as adults. And that's another thing that I was talking to my daughter last night with the auditions is that because they needed her to do some giggles. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard to get kids to laugh on command and I'll yeah. tickle them and I'll do whatever I need to. But I'm just like, pretend you're having fun with your friends. I want you to think about the best day. I want you to mm-hmm. think about when you do your gymnastics and you just, you love life and let it bubble up and come out of you. So she's still working mm-hmm. on that. She's a little nervous in front of the mic still, mm-hmm. but it's all part of the journey. So yeah. I do learn a ton from my kids. That's a great question that I don't think everyone's ever really asked me before. Oh, and you know what's so funny is that when I was teaching, of course, I worked in high school, I learned so much, probably more from the kids than they might've learned from me. I mean, my hope was to inspire and motivate them, but boy, did I learn a whole lot from them. It's why I coach today because I really feel that give and take and I can completely understand when you're working with your children. Like it's such a wonderful give and take when you're experiencing that together and you're learning together and you're guiding her and hopefully getting her super excited to just excel at voiceover. And so great for you. Now, how do you find the time? There's the question probably everybody asked you because Mm. I was part of a four-child family and I know how busy my mom was. She was constantly carting me everywhere to my piano lessons or whatever that was. I also rode horses, but it was a crazy busy time for my mom. So how do you do it all? I just really think time management is important, but also just Mm -hmm. understanding boundaries. I Mm -hmm. have worked for many years without my kids being away and with having really limited childcare hours because Mm -hmm. I love my kids and I want to spend time with them. So everything I teach, I say, do it in the cracks of life. There's Mm -hmm. always little windows and bits. And if you can take that, you can actually concentrate it and do more in that time. I've found that since my kids, all four of them are in school full time, I have to really rein myself in and Mm -hmm. plan my day more consecutively to where I'm using it more effectively. Because when I just had two hours in a day to work during nap time, boy, I really hustled. And I Mm -hmm. really focused on marketing on LinkedIn. That was the thing Mm -hmm. that I needed to do. I have not enjoyed endless auditioning. That's not something that really floats my boat. I don't love it. I, I don't do either. auditions. Yeah. And actually, I joined Bidalgo <laughs> this say year. That? Yeah. <laughs> we have don't to do either. what we have to do. I know, we do. But I don't hardly audition on Voice 123 because mm-hmm. there's just so many and there's so many people. But I do love, of course, agents. I will audition everything that I feel is appropriate yes, for absolutely. my. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. agents, current mm-hmm. clients that maybe yep. they need three choices to send to their end person. Yeah, or some of the different production houses that I'm part of, they'll need auditions and Bidalgo, but really that's it. Most of the time, it's directly communicating with the client because that is where I really love that. enjoy. Yeah, I love that. And you know, that's so interesting because I feel that we're kind of like soul sisters in that area because right now, the way that I have, I'm doing a lot of things. I mean, I'm doing this podcast, I'm doing a VO Peeps group, and I also coach and I do voiceover. So I don't have a ton of time to devote to auditioning. And so for me, it was more about the direct marketing. One of the things that I developed because I didn't have a ton of time was the Boss Blast, which was a direct marketing 
listening to a list. And that makes total sense that for you, you would go and use LinkedIn or use whatever social platform that worked for you to get those jobs directly because that kind of bypasses a lot of times the need for an audition. And also, I I would imagine I'm going to talk to you about that, like what search engine optimization has to do in LinkedIn that helps you get found. And people maybe reach out to you and then if they hear your demo or you've got samples up there, I would imagine that then they just say, have an inquiry and say, how much would it cost to do this? And for me, that's the time saver where I don't have to audition. And it's not that I won't audition, but it's just that I don't have a ton of time. So I had to get more efficient at my marketing. So then let's talk about LinkedIn. Now, why LinkedIn, first of all, for you and not some other social platform? Well, I mean, the other ones are fun, but when Mm. people think about business, they think about LinkedIn. It is Mm -hmm. the number one most widely used business social media platform. So naturally, that's where I was going to go because I'm not interested in getting followers and being popular Mm. online. I'm just here to build those business relationships and grow my business. And I did it. I mean, I would Mm -hmm. market to as many people as I could. My goal was 20 people per day, new people that I would reach out to. As a young person in my career, as a young mom of little kids, Mm -hmm. I knew my time was limited. So that's where I focused. I said, I'm going to market to 20 people per day. And I kept like a little, just a paper, like a Mm -hmm. written, handwritten notebook where Mm -hmm. I would write down names and dates. And then I would, you know, make a note back if someone contacted me back. But it was just a visual tool to show me that I had actually accomplished something that day. And now I have a resource in my LinkedIn marketing course, the VO Edge, that's called Five Daily Reach Outs. Because 20 Mm -hmm. is a lot. And I realize that's a lot. So, but five, anybody can do five. And that's why over the years, I've learned from people like you, people like Natasha Marchevka, people Mm -hmm. that know how to break a big task into little tasks. If you do that, you can accomplish so much more because you're not going to get discouraged. Yep. And to have a plan. Absolutely. I guarantee that you don't wake up wondering, I wonder what I'm going to do today. You know <laughs> what you're doing because you are super organized. Well, I think you have to be, right? And especially mm-hmm. for us to be successful and to continue to grow in our businesses. I mean, we have to be because we've got a lot of things that we're doing. I mean, you're a mom of four, you're a voice talent, you're running an online. Is it an online course and is it live as well? No, it's just online. It's online only. And I did that to save myself time. I really put a lot Mm -hmm. of thought into planning out the different modules and lessons, and I tightly edited them so there's Mm -hmm. no wasted time because I don't like my time to be wasted, and I didn't want to do that to anybody else. So it's about two hours of content overall. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I also do like a little introductory pump-up video to kind of get people Mm -hmm. excited and motivated to do that module and that lesson. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's totally, anybody can do it in their own time. It's on demand and you can go revisit it anytime. It's all videos and there's some downloads too. And I imagine, because creating curriculum, of course, being an educator, right, for the longest time, I mean, it takes time to create good content. So for you to keep that up to date and keep that as a successful online course, congratulations. First of all, I know how much time that takes and how much effort it takes to get really good content and a really good course online that people can really get value out of. Now, do you do any special coaching? I'm sure people are coming up to you go, please, can you just help me with my profile? Or do you do any type of individual coaching as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do one-on-one. And so I'll do like a Mm -hmm. private consulting session for an hour and we'll go Mm -hmm. over, typically we'll start with the profile. And Mm -hmm. I always ask, hey, please send me any questions in advance, the things you really want to know, because I'm not Mm going to waste your time and we're going to go quickly during this hour. Good. But I don't do a ton of that because Mm -hmm. the course is so comprehensive that most Mm -hmm. people get their questions answered through that. Awesome. And I really do direct them towards the course Mm -hmm. because then it doesn't take up my time. Right. But I love working with people. As you know, it's so much more fun to get to know people individually during that hour. So, I mean, I've made a friend by the end of the hour and I love that. It is. The only thing is, is that as you keep trying to, and for me, I'm I'm very business-minded, right? And for me, if I'm not growing, then I'm stagnating and that's not necessarily where I want to be. And so personally in my business, I'm always looking to grow in one way or another. And so every week, every month, every year, I'm looking at how can I grow my business? And so your personal time is probably the most precious time that you 
you have. And so, for example, I can't coach any more people. I cannot do any more one-on-ones because I'm one person and I simply don't have the hours in the day to do everything that I want to do. So it is important to be efficient. So let's talk a little bit more about the LinkedIn. You're using the free version of LinkedIn, right? Right. I've never done the premium. Okay. You've never even tried it. No. It's just so robust. I don't need it. Okay. You do get limited on the number of connections, but what I've taught people is that you can put your searches in and then bookmark it, and Mm -hmm. that way you can just keep going back to that page, and it doesn't keep dinging you for additional searches. Ah, Got it. That's a big secret. That's that a lot of people okay. We can go home now. That's it. That's (laughs) that's it. That's the nugget. But I mean, what you mentioned earlier about optimizing the SEO. So let's talk about Mm -hmm. that. Yes, that is one of the key things, and you're great at that on your website. I know that. Thank you. you. Well, you come from a tech background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And it's additional content. It's yes. definitely worth it to spend the time on the content because it brings people to your site. And I imagine people on LinkedIn searching for voiceover talent, like you want them to reach your profile. So right. yeah, let's talk about what do you do to enhance your SEO for that? Well, so there are three steps in what I teach with LinkedIn. And the first step is optimizing your profile. Mm-hmm. So that's where you must start. Do not start reaching out to people if you haven't completely shined yeah. up your profile and made it the best it can be. So obviously that would be the base step in step one. So step one involves just putting yourself forward authentically. Mm. One of the things that I really harp on is how there's so much inauthentic spammy marketing and you can stand out by being authentic. I consider my life messy. People know that I have four kids and I don't hide it. I put all over my Instagram, I just posted one recently about going Christmas shopping with the kids and it was just, I did (laughs) not want to go. It starts off with me making a face, you know, like, I don't want to do this. And I used, like, the circus theme because sometimes that's how I feel, like I live in a circus. Mm -hmm. So I allow people to get a glimpse into my messiness, and I feel like that's actually been a boost to my brand Mm -hmm. because I'm relatable, and we all have messes. So why pretend to be perfect? So when you create your profile, though, you are your most businessy self on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. I'm not nearly as messy there. I will be Mm -hmm. all kinds of messy on Instagram and Facebook. But here on LinkedIn, we're a little bit more put together. We want to make sure that people know we can handle the work. We're not going to flake. We're dependable. So keywords that emphasize those kinds of business ethics are key. Mm -hmm. And also speaking from a one-on-one perspective, don't make it sound like Tracy Lindley is a full-time voice actor, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. You want to say, I am. So you're Mm -hmm. speaking to the first person. I tell people to look at it as if you were at a networking event and you're meeting someone Mm -hmm. for the first time and they say, what do you do? So you've got Mm -hmm. a big picture back here where you're giving an overall view of who you are because they asked. And if they're visiting your profile, that's kind of like asking, what do you do? Let me get to know you a bit. Mm -hmm. And then when you get down to the experience section about being a voice talent, then that's when you get into more of the nitty gritty, like Mm -hmm. clients, Mm -hmm. agents, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you put examples and demos on there as well in your profile? Oh, yeah. That's key. Media? I Mm -hmm. mean, Mm -hmm. why would you want to hire somebody that doesn't have any examples at all of their work? Right. And don't make them go looking on your website. That wastes mm-hmm. their time. Everything that we do needs to be client-centered. And it wastes the client's time to take them to your website or some other source. Mm-hmm. You should put it right there on LinkedIn. Put all your best examples. And a lot of times people are starting out brand new. Like if you've coached someone and they've just created a demo and they mm-hmm. have no body of work, they can take that demo that you've created with them and turn it into a video and display that on LinkedIn. Videos are effective. Yes, And you Mm -hmm. can't really do an MP3 on LinkedIn. You have Mm. to do some sort of video. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people do SoundCloud, but I don't find that very effective because it's just a static picture. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I think even a very simple video is fine. Some people do make it look like all these clips of commercials, which is Mm -hmm. really cool, but it's also costly. And if people are bootstrapping their business at the beginning, it's really easy to create a very simple video with your picture and Mm -hmm. just a few things. Contact information on the back. 
Mm -hmm. contact information is huge because that's our call to action is contact me. What about your feed on LinkedIn? Are you posting to the feed on LinkedIn? Are you creating content? Because I know a big thing, gosh, a couple of years ago when I was looking back into it was creating content and posts, like short blog posts in LinkedIn. Is that still, is that effective? Is that, what are your thoughts on that? You know, video's really taken over. Mm -hmm. Blogs are still fantastic. And also they can link back to your website, which boosts your Mm -hmm. SEO. But really video is king right now. And those Mm -hmm. are the things that are going to get the most engagement. But you can't just get on camera and talk about nothing. You have to give people something of value. And you have to keep it short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I post videos, I try to keep them less than two minutes, 90 seconds if I can. Mm -hmm. You know, it just depends. I'll do it in one, two, no more than three takes. And if I can't get it in three takes, just forget it. I'll come back later. (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. I want it fresh. I want it off the cuff. Yeah. I want it to be as authentic as possible. Yeah, I agree. And so the big question is, and I know most of a lot of students will ask, well, what do I post or what do I talk about? Like, what do you talk about? Do you talk about voiceover? I don't think the intent is to do a hard sell on hire me. I do voiceover. What are your thoughts on creative videos that would bring value? Well, I'd say touch on things that make us human. Touch on things Mm -hmm. that make us a business person. So Mm -hmm. one of the best videos I ever did was talking about how I am extra. And at my kids' school, I was doing the announcing for the volleyball game. And I was told after that, hey, you know, you don't need to commentate so much about the volleyball game. You know, just do the sponsors and say something at the end of the match. Okay, but I didn't. I just would say something after like every point. I think it did get a little annoying. I did learn from that. (laughs) But my point was, I just couldn't sit there with this microphone and not say things. So I just realized I am extra. And I made a Mm -hmm. little video out of that and about rejoicing in being extra. And so, yes, so many people relate to that. And that kind of thing, that brings us together as humans. Mm -hmm. It makes us who we are. And I was the kind of girl that went door to door selling cookies in the neighborhood and asking Mm -hmm. if I could rake your leaves and things. I've always been a go-getter, and I know you are too, Anne. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. when you're a go-getter in this industry, you can't just sit back and do the minimum. Yeah, agreed. that was my video. Agreed. Well, I love that. So now outside of LinkedIn, right? And of course, bosses out there, I totally encourage all of you, just go take the course. Just do it. LinkedIn is just one of the best resources for getting work that I can think of. I guess my last question before I ask you the big question, which is... (laughs) I will get to that, is let's talk about templates or how do you reach out to somebody in a cold contact? I feel like cold contacting people is difficult. That I know. And so how do you wrangle that in reaching out and not being considered spammy? Is there a tip or two or three that you have in reaching out to people? Sure. My biggest tip is to look for anything that you can use to find common ground. So Mm -hmm. when people are just starting out using LinkedIn, one of the best ways to reach out is by geographic area. So Mm -hmm. you could reach out to folks in LA. I can reach out to folks in Kansas City. And that way we have that in common already. And we know that. And that's an easy thing to put into the search terms when we're using the search features of LinkedIn is Mm -hmm. geographical area. So that's one thing. But another thing, I encourage people to look through their profile and find something Mm. that they can relate to. Maybe they mention a cat or a dog or kids or I like to watch the Chiefs, whatever. Mm -hmm. Find something, if they've written any kind of personal about section, usually you can find something interesting there to comment about. But as far as templates, I am pro-templates within reason. I do think that it's good, if you're going to kind of write similar things each time. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. So Mm -hmm. I do encourage people to write templates, but personalize like the first sentence and always say that person's correctly spelled name. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Like I bet people spell your name A-N-N and you're like, yes, all the time. All the time they do. And I always get, yes, T-R-A-C-E-Y is how people mm -hmm. end up spelling my name. I'm like, there's no E. (laughs) (laughs) We don't like that. There's no E. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, what wonderful advice. Now, in addition to LinkedIn, what would be your best business tip for people just getting into the industry on how to establish their business or get work and be successful? I would say the best thing is to start local. Start with who you know. I think I'm hearing from your story that people who were your first clients were people you actually knew in your life, and they were Mm -hmm. in mine too. So Mm -hmm. when you are truly ready to hang out your open for business sign, 
Which means you've got a great website, you've got a great professionally produced demo, Mm -hmm. you have Mm -hmm. enough training to where if someone says, I need this, you can give it to them. Your sound quality has to be top notch. You have to have a low sound floor, no buzzing, no echo, all that stuff. And you know how to use your equipment, including Source Connect, if you say that you have Source Connect. Okay, if you have all that stuff, then you are ready to start hanging out your sign and telling people on Facebook and Instagram and whatever that you're doing voiceover. And chances are there's someone in your life who needs voiceover, especially if you have a Mm -hmm. decent personal social network. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it happened for me was I was personally connected to someone that owned a marketing firm and he was one of my first clients. My alma mater hired me to do a short documentary. There were some little IVR things that I did and Mm -hmm. it just kind of snowballs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I felt confident. I'm like, okay, I have a little bit of work here that I can showcase. It may not be any brand names that are super sexy, but it's work. And it sounds good and it looks good. So let's put it out there. So that's what I started doing. It builds on each other. It's amazing how important local can be Mm -hmm. in establishing relationships, also relationships that keep coming back as you nurture it. I have so many repeat clients that I've had for years because like you say, communication is key and nurturing those relationships are key. And a lot of them started off locally. And I think that that is something people don't think of. And that also locally helps when you're advertising like where you are voicing from, like voicing from Southern California or Orange County, California, or Los Angeles area. Even just putting those words on your website help for people to find you because most of the times when people are searching using Google, it's automatically got localization turned on. And so if they're searching for voice talent, it's going to search locally first. And so you want to be up at the top of that search. So great advice, Tracy. I want to thank you so very much for joining me today. Yay, my bucket list checked off. Oh, me too. This is so fun. And I'll see you at VO Atlanta in March. I know. I'm very excited. How can people get in touch with you? And where can they go to get that course again? Okay, so my website, if people want to check out me or my work or whatever, that's tracylindley.com. And the course is at thelinkedinedge.com. Or if you want to just look at the one for voice actors, it's thevoedge.com, and it'll take you right there. Perfect. And I'm happy to answer questions. Contact me on Instagram. My handle is at Tracy Lindley VO pretty much everywhere. Awesome. Tracy, thank you so much again for joining me. I'm going to give a great big shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. You two can network and connect like a boss. Find out more at IPDTL.com. And also, I want you to understand about your chance to use your voice to make an immediate difference in our world and give back to the communities that give to you. Visit 100voiceswhocare.org to commit and find out more. You guys have an amazing week. Tracy, thank you again. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Join us next week for another edition of VO Boss with your host, Ann Ganguza. And take your business to the next level. Sign up for our mailing list at voboss.com and receive exclusive content, industry revolutionizing tips and strategies, and new ways to rock your business like a boss. Redistribution with permission, coast-to-coast connectivity via IPDTL.